Alright, here's the idler gear. It gets a couple of bearings and there should be a shaft for it. There it is. Feels like an aluminum piece. There's that. Not the not the lowest friction bearings of all time, but they'll do the trick for now. And then the top shaft is an entire assembly. Let's see how that works out. Here's your top shaft. It's got a notch at one end to give you reference. This is going to get a bearing and then it's going to get a sleeve, which is a plastic piece that comes off of a parts sprue. Parts sprue K. This is what parts uh, sprue K looks like. It has the big battery door on it. So if you're looking for that, that piece, it's easy to pick it out and, and the piece you needed was right from here. It's this little tube. It's actually tapered, so you want to make sure that you put it on the right way. The thinner end goes towards this bearing. And I put two shims on there. There are two small uh, 0.2 millimeter shims that come on, followed by, let's see, followed by this pin. And they did a tricky thing here with the pin. It kind of messes you up again with the partition of the bag inside of the bag that contains the top shaft there is a pin and you would expect that that pin goes with the top shaft well it doesn't it's this black one it comes with that and it does not go with that that one's too long you want to use the thicker of the uh, silver colored uh, shiny metallic looking pins which is actually shorter than the black one and that is followed up by a little idler, not idler gear, top top gear. Push all this together and then there's one last small bearing that goes on the end. I already greased these up because I made a mistake but fortunately was able to uh, cut that out of the video. Love video editing. And then this whole thing is going to go into the transmission half like so. And then comes a idler gear which is going to go in like so make sure that these end up flush you need to push everything in all the way make sure the bearing gets seated you can just see how these line up properly followed by the diff which needs the large bearing and the shims Went a little bit out of order with this part but there's that there's that and this goes into the transmission half. Again, make sure it seats in all the way. Looks pretty good. And the other half can fit on from the other side. And again, this should just snap together. There should be no forcing required. And I'm just going to verify that this is feeling pretty smooth in there. Now, don't ask me why they used a 2.6 millimeter screw here in the middle of a build that's basically dominated by three millimeter screws. Uh, don't get it, but it's what they give you. It has a hex head, unlike most of the screws which have Phillips heads. Okay. Speaking of which, here's a Phillips head now. And I'm going to take a shortcut on this. Alright, now I get to affix the motor mount plate. And for this, I again dip into parts tree K and get this little angle bracket adapter off of that. And this is just going to get a countersunk, a single countersunk screw from the other side. Do this by hand. That's actually pretty tough to get in there. Remind me, if you will, next time that I need to screw something into a piece from parts tree K, remind me to tap it first. This will help. All right, that looks good. Now, this is going to go on like so. And it's going to use three long screws and they want you to use a little bit of their gel type thread lock compound, which is not included with this kit not too tight with these don't want to crush the bearings i can actually already feel that there's a little bit too much tightness in there i'm going to back these off just slightly before the thread lock starts to set up definitely want to be very careful with the 
amount of pressure you put on those screws and make sure you use plenty of, of that thread lock compound because that's all that's going to be holding these screws really in. It's not going to have much pressure behind it, not much torque. And then finally, there is a belt. Uh, what do you call these things? A pulley. And this is going to go on. I've got three pieces. Again, going back to parts tree K. K8 is over here. This guy is going to come in from the back. This guy from the front. There we go. All snaps together. Pushes in nice and firmly. That looks pretty good. And this goes over outside and this is where you get to use that black pin finally that was that was uh, bundled with the top shaft it does go with the top shaft it just doesn't go at the expected time it goes a little bit later that goes straight in like so and then looks like the spur gear is actually going to capture that pin there is a a hole for a set screw here to hold the pin in place, but I don't see any uh, indication in the manual that they want you to use that, which is fine by me. Just use the spur gear itself to hold that in place. And then there are some specialty screws used to hold the spur gear in. These have very, very, very thin flat heads. And I want to make sure I use the right tip of screwdriver here. Okay, so that's an assembled transmission right there, and I'm going to put that aside for the moment and pick up an exciting piece, the biggest piece of all, the chassis. This is a fairly flexible piece. It is fiber reinforced, but it's, it's got some pretty, uh, pretty soft nylons in it. This will all get stiffened up as things start to get assembled together. And speaking of assembly, I'm going to work on the rear right here because I need to get that transmission attached to this, but there's some prep work that comes before that. All right, first I've got a couple of pivot blocks that are going to go back here that are going to receive the front end of the suspension pins, the inner pins. But these are on fairly high uh, fiber plastic again, and I'm going to pre-tap them this time, at least part way learning from that prior experience. Now making sure that these are oriented properly. Got the A's, it's got XA on one end, A on the other, and uh, I've taken care to make sure I'm looking at the right part. There's an M6 and an, M, uh, an M5. Get these screwed in. Now a couple parts from parts tree N. I'm going to be using parts, uh, there's two of them, two identical ones, parts N7. Folks who play the game Mass Effect will relate to that number. Uh, let's see, we've got a couple of lock nuts. They are going to dip down to, into these recesses, these hex-shaped recesses first. One of them, two of them, these are fairly low-profile nylock nuts. And those are going to get held in place by the N7s, which in turn get held in place by some very short little 6 millimeter uh, countersunk screws. Now some cradle and brace pieces will come into play. And I'm going to take care to make sure that parts A2 and A3 are arranged properly on the right side or the correct side and this plastic here just testing it out uh, feels like I hopefully won't need to pre-thread these but let's see how that goes again using three by eight millimeter screws those were a little bit resistant to assembly so for these for this next one I will pre-tap the holes just a little bit Now these large arch-shaped rear chassis braces go on, something like that. And I will again pre-tap, I'm going to be screwing in right here, pre-tap just part way. Alright, now I can put the transmission on.
belt goes on first, they say. Then this is going to drop in place something, something like that. Perfect. Looks really good. You know what? I'm not even going to slip this belt on just yet. It's just going to get in the way. But uh, this guy right here. All right. Now I'll put the belt on. Just kind of set it there. And now come a couple more parts kind of the top bulkhead uh, camera link mount, shock tower mount. I'm gonna get the camera link ball studs on here first and I will pre-tap these holes a little bit, actually most of the way because the ball studs themselves are aluminum. So I don't wanna put a lot of torque on them or have to put a lot of torque on them at all. And this is a somewhat hard plastic, again, fiber reinforced. Whole assembly kind of snaps in place there. And time for some screws to hold this top piece down. And then there's a spur gear guard that goes over here. Mm, how does this go? Like so. Gets affixed with one single screw. There we go, that's that. And there we have it. That's basically how the entire rear end is going to go together driveline wise and suspension will come later on. But up next, I get to start doing the same, basically the analogous thing up front, which is going to start with the front diff.